All right, I'm here going over some of the games I've been playing recently. Uh, throughout the month of March, we got here two games I would like to talk about this time, so it might be a bit of a shorter video, but some interesting stuff. Uh, so first game I've been playing, I think a lot of people probably been playing, uh, released on February 29th, which Thursday, but it was just, that's cool that they got the leap, you know, leap day is like their release day. I think that's pretty cool, but Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, so essentially March release, but this is, of course, the second part of this new, it's going to end up being a trilogy of Final Fantasy VII remakes. Um, I'm not going to talk spoilers for this game, uh, but I might, you know, I think there's going to end up being spoilers for the original remake part. So uh, if you want to skip to the next part, you can go ahead, but just so you know. Um, so Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is awesome. Uh, so when I first started it up, I was like, this is really cool. This is really awesome. This looks fantastic. And then it gets the gameplay and it's on the the, the uh, graphics mode. And it's like, I don't, I'm, I was never much of a frame rate snob before. And I'm, st I, I still am not for the most part. I mean, I play a lot of retro stuff that the frame rate's not so hot. I play Switch quite a bit. Frame rate's obviously not so hot there. But just having this game being in 30 FPS, I was like, no. And I, I mean, I played the first remake on PS4, so obviously that was 30 FPS there. But I was like, ugh, no. So I go over, I switch it to the, you know, performance mode. And it's really, the resolution definitely take, took a hit. Luckily, they've patched this. So about, like, when I got, like, halfway through the game or so, this was patched. So re I would say resolution's improved and we're at a good place as far as um, frame rate goes. But... Just something I noticed there. It was one of those things where I was like, man, you know, we are kind of getting to a point now with PS5 where we are not getting the cross-gen PS4 and PS5 games. And we still are to some extent, but we're getting these bigger games. You know, this is PS5 only, stuff like that. And I'm already like, all right, we're finally at this point. It's probably about time for PS5 Pro and we're getting these PS5 Pro rumors. So a little disappointing there, but the patch has definitely made it a lot better. And this is just really awesome. I really, I have just really enjoyed how they are going back, expanding upon the game of Final Fantasy VII. And I guess this is the only spoiler I'll really drop about Final Fantasy VII Remake Part One um, is that it's kind of you know this pseudo sequel in a way, but also it is like these both of these things happen. Final Fantasy VII happened in the timeline. Final Fantasy VII Remake kind of alternate universe has also happened. Um, and they're, the way they're playing around with that. So I'm not finished with this. I'm, you know, by the time this video is live, I'm going to guess I'm finished with this. But uh, as of recording this video, uh, probably a couple more sessions and I'll be done with it. But um, I really do like what they've done with the story and how they're differentiating it. Because Final Fantasy VII is still a fantastic game. The original PS1 game, still one of my all-time favorites. It's still a fantastic game. So to be able to be like, yeah, I really feel like you should play... Final Fantasy VII, then Final Fantasy VII Remake, then Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Throw in, you know, uh, the, what's the um, Crisis Core? Throw that in there. They did that little remaster of that for PS5. You know, throw all that in. You know, get the full experience. But really cool stuff. But I'm really impressed with how they've expanded upon this from the first one. And I think Final Fantasy VII Remake is awesome. But I also thought that there were swaths of that game that were just kind of boring. Um, as far as environments get kind of samey and, and all of that, but this game has changed that for the best. One of you know, constantly new, unique environments. The open world is huge, um, and a lot of the stuff to do in the open world is kind of like standard. You know, go to this tower and activate this tower. Do some fights with these specific enemies, and you know, get all the you know, check off all the boxes for how you're supposed to fight in this fight. Um, you know, go over here. The side quests are much better than the original game. That was one of my biggest disappointments with Final Fantasy VII Remake is that the side quests were just, ugh, like nothing. Like, oh, go find six cats or whatever. Really boring. And Final Fantasy XVI, I liked that game a lot too, but I also thought the side quests in that were not very good. But this is kind of, with a lot of the side quests, they pair you up with one of your party members and there's kind of some expositions and some like character team building between the characters and you learn more about them and everything. Uh, it's really clever how they do it. And usually the fight, the, um, they have some pretty good fights in them too, to make it worthwhile. Uh, and you get some good gear, get some good uh, XP. Uh, if when you're in Gongaga in this game, do not do the chicken side quest. It is the worst, maybe one of the worst things I've ever played in my life. Uh, it's miserable. The chicken side quest is horrendous. 
if you've not yet made it to Gungaga, um, which isn't a spoiler because everyone knows, you know, but if you've not yet made it there, do not do the chicken side quest. It's horrible. It's miserable. Just don't do it. Um, but I really like the story. Uh, it was really cool that, you know, it starts with the flashback um, to Sephiroth and kind of, well, one of the first things you do is the Sephiroth five years ago segment um, in, in Nibelheim, which is classic, of course. But the way they do this where you're able to see Sephiroth more as like, you know, the character he was before he kind of goes insane is super cool. And it is super cool just how um, one of the my favorite things is that there is like a almost like a victory fanfare version of, you know, the classic Sephiroth final boss music that we all know um, that makes it sound complete. You can tell it's the same song, but it, it sounds completely different and just how it almost sounds like victorious. It sounds really cool. And then you can kind of just see how, you know, he goes downhill. Uh, so I really like they're just exploring these characters more. They're really just exploring this world more in a fantastic way. And I think when they, you know, they really had to prove themselves when they first announced this. Because you got to remember, this was announced 2015, I believe. Yeah, 2015 E3. And Square Enix was not at a great point. You know, we were waiting forever for Kingdom Hearts 3 and Final Fantasy 15. And in some way, you know, those games would come out and not exactly be, you know what people wanted from them. Uh, and I, I like both of those games just fine. But when they came out and they're saying, we're make, remaking Final Fantasy VII, we are, it is going to be in several parts. And I think a lot of people read that as, oh, it's going to be episodic, like Life is Strange or something, uh, which was not the case. And it makes sense to, we're expanding this and we're making it a trilogy. Um, and then we are going to, uh, originally, if you remember, it was going to be developed by CyberConnect2, which is like the the studio that makes like Naruto, Naruto games and stuff. So I think everyone had the right to be like, Ooh, I don't know about this, but Square Enix took it in, in house and everything. And it turned out fantastic. Uh, both parts have been great so far and I'm just really thrilled with it. I think it's fantastic. And you know, Final Fantasy seven is one of my favorite games and what they're doing with this is, has been just really cool. Um, and I mean, if you've not played it, I can't recommend it enough. If you are playing it, um, let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, be wary of spoilers for other people for the, for this game, but I have just really liked it. Combat, uh, combat's really cool. They've they've definitely kind of expanded combat where there's you know team up moves you can do with other characters, and there's just a lot more that you can do. Obviously, uh, you only had four party members in the original game, uh, and now you have you know, you're able to have more than that. I don't want to spoil who joins the party yet, who doesn't, I guess. Um, but you have more party members than you do in the original game. They all play pretty differently. Um, I'll, I mean, I'll talk about, I want to talk about, they, they expand into characters that, you know, I never really cared about. Like Kate Sith is this stupid little robot cat, right? In the original game, who goes around on a stuffed animal. And they expand upon him in this game, and it's like, oh, this is really cool. And he has this completely weird, um, completely unique fighting style in combat that once you understand what it is, you're like, oh, that's really cool. Like, they're just doing a lot with this game, and they're really building something awesome. And I appreciate their, some of these side characters, you know, the main party members, but the ones who aren't, like, you know, the focus of the game are getting a lot more, you know, in-depth exploration of who they are, what, you know, what's up. And it's just really cool. And it's so cool how you can have this game with a cast that's humans. And then there's this weird dog and there's this cat and they talk and the cat has a Scottish accent and all that stuff. But it never at any point, I mean, it feels, you know, like a, like a fantasy, obviously it's final fantasy, but it never at any point feels like this is, this is stupid. It's... The only way I can really describe it is like a more mature anime in a sense. Um, or it's definitely anime. It's very Japanese, but it's not ob obnoxious. I don't, I don't think it would, I'm very, you know, a lot of people really are turned off by anime and anime sensibilities and, you know, the voice acting even. And I'm just kind of accustomed to it because I play a lot of JRPGs, but I, I could see an a normal person who doesn't watch anime or like anime playing this and not being, you know, disgusted by it. So that's all I have to say about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Uh, this is going to be definitely in the talks for Game of the Year. Um, 
will be interesting to see where things go. But we've had a great year so far with uh, JRPGs with this and Persona 3 Reload and Unicorn Overlord is, is supposed to be great. I'm going to probably play that one after, after the finish up Rebirth. So really good stuff. So my next game here is an interesting one. I wanted to give this game a chance knowing that... So this is Alone in the Dark. This is the reboot of the series. This is another reboot. And when this game was announced, obviously it's developed by Pieces Interactive, who I've never heard of before, published by THQ Nordic. Pieces is owned by THQ Nordic. So it's a whole Embracer Group thing, which is (laughs) another story. But uh, when this was announced and when I saw it, I was like, this is going to be you know, this game will be lucky to be a 70 on Metacritic. Like, it's, it's, I think Peace is in, is in uh, Sweden. So it's it's a lower budget um, survival horror game, like double A, not quite triple A, but definitely double A. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how this does. And I think the Metacritic's in the high 60s right now. Um, so I was like, okay. I mean, this is about what I expected. I, I did not expect uh, a Resident Evil 2 remake out of this game. And you can see it's inspired by the Resident Evil remake games, clearly, but this game would be lucky to have had a third of the budget of those games. And I think expectations is everything with this. And I think if you go into this game with the right mindset, knowing I'm not going to get it, you know, a 10 out of 10, I'm not going to get Resident Evil 4 remake, but I'm going to get a worthwhile uh, survival horror game. um, I think you'll enjoy this. So the, I've played through, I, I finished one campaign. There's two different campaigns. I don't know how much they vary. I would, I'm going to think that they probably vary pretty drastically just based on how much the characters share the screen together. Um, I am going, so I, I beat the female protagonist because that was just the first one that popped up for me to do. Uh, I'd like to go back, I'm going to go back and do the other character. Um, but I've at least beat that one. It took me about six hours to finish that campaign, so... I think the, from what I'm reading is that both campaigns are around the same length. So like 12 hour game, uh, I think that's completely appropriate. I feel like there's a big conversation as far as, you know, games are getting too expensive, which they are. When you look at something like, I really liked um, Insomniac Spider-Man 2, but that game was, I think cost like $350 million to make. Like that's expensive and games are taking a long time to make. They're getting expensive. They're getting, um, I mean, we're seeing the layoffs. It's starting to get to be too much, especially as, you know wallets are tightening during this economic downturn. Um, So, you know, we see the people advocating for, we need shorter games, less, you know, worse graphics, uh, smaller budgets. And I feel like this game is that, like, it's not that perfectly, but it is that. I mean, this is a 12 hour game. I can't imagine the budget was very high. Um, (laughs) And it's pretty solid. Like, I would say that this is the best seven out of 10 you'll play in the wild. In, in a while. Um, and it's not perfect by any means, but I really uh, enjoyed my time with it. I'm looking forward to going back to it at some point. Um, so the setup is pretty much pretty like, you know, I guess alone in the dark, but I mean, classic Resident Evil, you're in this mansion and you're doing puzzles. Um, there's some kind of weird dream sequences that take you to different, uh, biomes and stuff. And it's, it's a pretty large game for what it is. Actually, there's a lot of diversity in like the environments and everything. So I think that's interesting. And just looking at it f- from like exploration, it's pretty solid. I, the character models and cutscenes aren't great. Um, voice acting isn't very good. And we have, um, so ce- actually some celebrities, not like, I forget who they are. Uh, the one guy from Gran Turismo, and uh, I don't know some the one actress that's in something I don't know. Um, so they have like the two main characters are from you know ho- Hollywood celebrities, and they're not. I wouldn't say that they are uh, you know a tier <laughs> celebrities, but you know they're still actors and and but the performances are not great. I feel like the direction was probably off, and I also feel like I if I don't you know I don't know a hundred percent, but I'm gonna guess neither of these people have ever played a video game before, so the actress who is doing flavor text for you know a survival horror game and she has to say like oh i'm I'm out of bullets or something and it just doesn't sound good because you don't know what no context no reference for what a video game character sounds like when they're doing this flavor text talking to themselves and it's not like um horizon where she talks to herself every five seconds but so it's not annoying but it is just one of those weird things where it's like that's not great and i would say the other 
actors um, of these more minor characters are bad performances, all I'll say. But aside from that, there's very little cutscene time. Um, so it, that's not a big part of it. The game looks very nice, like uh, the environments and everything. It looks pretty nice, you know, good lighting and everything. So it, it just is a very uh, well put together game that way. And that's kind of what I play survival horror games for. I like the exploration. I like the puzzle solving. I like all that stuff. So I was like, yeah, this is this is what I'm looking for. This is pretty good. Puzzles are pretty good. Um, some of them are a little easy. I would say the game's overall pretty easy. Like, I don't think I died at all. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I was definitely enjoying the puzzles. They kind of, it's, it's like a deceptive open-endedness where you get to a chapter and there's, you know, like five things you got to do, get these different puzzles and they give you like a checklist and it's like, okay, you have to go use this key to go to this room and then solve the puzzles there. But, oh, this puzzle needs something from this, you know, over here. And you kind of naturally take it all in if you're doing exploring and being like, oh, okay, that's, I, now I know where that you know, piece of the globe can go in there and do this or whatever. So I really like that kind of gameplay. And I feel like the open-endedness and the design is very solid here. Like I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, combat is not good. <laughs> it's not like deadly premonition bad. Like it's not like either of those games horrible, but it's, it's not good. It's a little bit stiff and just uh, um, a little slow. And then the enemies are kind of fast, but I mean, I don't think I ever died. So it wasn't like a problem. And they also, for the most part, don't focus very much on combat, which I think was smart. Like, if, you know, if you're not very good at combat and you know it, like, don't spend too much time on combat. And maybe I, you know, it could be a thing of, like, one of them is more combat heavy than the other, and I played the less combat heavy um, scenario. But there is, like, two boss fights in the game. They're both very easy, but they're both very bad. And... I would say the story of the game is not very interesting. I think the setting is that takes place in like the twenties. I think that's a really cool setting, like twenties, Louisiana. I think that's a cool setting, but I, I think the story is kind of like whatever. And the ending's pretty stupid. <laughs> and just the, um, I don't know, like boss fights, n no good, but there is something here. Um, it is a $60 game. I'd recommend it if you like the genre and want to support the genre. I would def when this game goes lower in price, I would I would say like if you can get this game for like thirty bucks or less, you're you know gonna have a good time with it. Uh, it's one of those games like Callisto Protocol where I'm like yeah I can understand why someone wouldn't want to pay for this full price. I'm a big survival horror fan, so I'm fine with it. Um, and I think this game is much better than Callisto Protocol, even though I I did enjoy that game too. But uh, I would recommend it. You know I'd give it a shot. I would definitely if you can get it for cheaper, I would definitely recommend it. But even at full price, I would say you know. You can definitely do worse this year. Um, and so, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I liked it. And it's one of those things where I'm like, yeah, this, I don't really care too much about scores or ratings, but this is like a nice seven. Uh, it's good. You know, I, I saw some other reviews and I'll be honest, I don't really read re reviews. Like I, I, I don't see like places like GameSpot or IGN. I don't see how they have any relevance anymore. And that's not even as an attack. I just mean like realistically, like who's like, all right, got to, you know, get online and go to IGN.com and I'm going to read the front page and see what's up. Like, I don't think that person exists anymore. But uh, I saw some really low reviews. Like, I saw some threes and some fours and I was I was like, eh, I, I mean, it's your opinion, I guess, but I feel like that's kind of harsh for something like this. And I wonder how much of it is, and this is just tinfoil hat, but obviously Embracer Group sucks um, and they're pretty poorly managed. And I wonder how much of it is like something like that. I don't know, you know if that had anything or not, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely not a bad game. It is, it is good. Uh, it could be better. And I feel like if they got a sequel, um, they could probably do something pretty cool with it. Uh, and you know, get a sequel, you know, you have experience of this game under your belt. Um, the, I don't think the studio's ever made anything like this big or like this before. So you get that experience, you know, put it towards a sequel. Let's see how it does. I think it could be good. Um, odds are this probably won't sell very well and then Embracer will shut them down and it'll be over, but that's another story, but would recommend it hundred percent. Um, other than that, that's what I've been playing lately. Uh, this uh, ended up being 20 minutes anyway. I figured it'd be maybe like 15, but whatever. Um, so if you like this video, uh, leave it a like always helps out the channel. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I'm hoping to get to garage sales soon. 
I know up uploads have been kind of sporadic, but I'm hoping to get to garage sales soon, so we'll be able to uh, get some good videos out of that, hopefully. And uh, leave a comment down below if you've been playing either of these games or with what you've been playing. And until next time, I'd like to thank you for watching.